Hi everyone, I wanted to welcome you to the first tutorial for my Frosting Artist stencils. So today we're going to be doing the peach stencils because I actually have a couple of orders. So I wanted to get this tutorial out so that I could help those that purchase my stencils for the peach. So what you'll get in your pack, this is what you end up frosting on. It's a super thin, clear piece of Duralar, and that makes it so that you can peel off your toppers. So you're going to frost directly onto this plastic. And the matte plastic does not work. Um, the toppers actually will stick to that. So I do not suggest using the same matte that I make my stencils out of. I've tried it before it does not work so you'll receive one of these sheets you'll also receive my um, royal icing frosting recipe I'll have all the ingredients directions and obviously the storage and with each stencil pack I guess <laughs> um, you'll receive an image of what you are frosting along with this shows each of the different stencils you will be receiving. So for this one, this is the complete pack that you can find in my Etsy shop right now. It comes with the whole peach and your half peach that has the pit exposed. So you'll be able to, as soon as you receive your package, you can open it up, verify that you received all the stencils, and know that you're set. Um, the other thing that I put together. These are the suggested color palettes. Basically how I frost it and you can obviously use whatever colors you want. Um, you don't have to use these ones but these are just ones I put together so each one has, I, I listed the actual color um, and which colors I mix to achieve that color and a lot of these when I make my stencils I try and make it as easy as possible so a lot of these will actually use the same color and you just add white or a little bit of a different color so all of these will be this color just lighter and then here's where you'll throw in that extra yellow make it lighter more yellow and then obviously lighter from there so the same with my browns You'll just add a little bit of orange and white to achieve the lighter brown for your stem. And then, as you can see, same happens with the green. So I try and make it as easy as possible when it comes to mixing the colors. Because it's no fun having to mix like 20 different colors all, all the time. So I have that in every single stencil pack that you will purchase through my shop. And then also, this is extremely important. Um, hopefully you can see it all right. This shows you exactly where to place your stencils to achieve the final look. So hopefully you can see that all right on the video. Um, so a lot of these um, will have several pieces that piece together so that you don't get a super thick topper. So like in this one, you'll have the peach that you actually frost, but this will be frosted separately. So then you'll piece these in at the very end. That's what this dark orange is. That's where you'll piece your leaves in. And the same goes for the pit. The pit will be frosted separate from the actual peach. So um, I'm not sure if you can see very well, but there is a lighter yellow circle here that you will be putting your pit onto. And a good way to kind of know which ones are going to be their own layers, right here how it says times three, because these, these are the labels of all of my stencils. So my stencils will have right here. So like this is H1, and then this stencil is also labeled H1. So that's how you can tell. And I also did that on all of these right here, W1, H1, W2, you know, 
So right here you can see H1 is this color, but I'm also using it for W1, which stands for whole peach, and this one stands for half peach. Whoa, that is not the right one. <laughs> Sorry. There we go. So both of these, you have your whole peach and your half peach, and both will be this color. So this kind of helps you know um, in advance what colors you need to hold on to so that you don't accidentally get rid of or not make enough of a certain color. So back to knowing which ones you're going to frost separately. So it says times three here next to your stencil name. And times three means that that's your base layer and you are going to frost over that layer with the same exact stencil W1 or L1, H1, and P1. Those will be frosted three times. So you will frost it, let it dry really good, and just throw on another another layer after it gets dried, and then one more layer. So the reason that we do that is because we're not frosting these directly onto a cookie. So we're frosting them again on this plastic, this super thin plastic here. Um, so if you don't do those three base layers, because I've tried to do two, I've tried to do one, and you're just going to be in a load of trouble if you don't do the three layers because they end up cracking when you try and peel them off. Not all of them, but they are a lot more fragile if you only do two layers, and especially if you only do one layer. They will not come off if you do one. They will just crumble. Uh, so you want to do those three layers. That's what my go-to number is, is three layers on the base, and that, and then you can start adding your next layers. And usually once you get that base done, because it's going to be dry, like, really dry, I usually spend, like, if I'm making several dozen cookies, I'll spend a good hour making sure that my bases are dry between each layer, because if you have a super dry base, then the rest of these details are going to go so quick because they just keep the layers just keep getting smaller and smaller as you go so they'll dry a lot faster and on these base ones I actually use a fan um, I just have it hooked up so that it's facing down and it can blow directly onto my layers as they dry so that way they dry even faster and usually I can get them frosted and by the time I get to the end of my loop because I'll frost them all at the same time like if I'm doing three dozen I'll frost all three dozen of these at the same time usually I'll make a larger sheet that has you know four of them on the sheet or six of them on the sheet so that way I can just get them done super quick but by the time you get to your last of your three dozen that first one is dry so you can loop right back around and start frosting all over again, all the way down the line. So it just, you're still frosting while you're waiting during the dry time. Or even with these smaller ones, by the time you clean your spatula and your bowl, your scraper, and you mix the next color, usually that previous layer is dry. And you can just get right on it. So there's not a lot of sitting around and waiting. It goes pretty quick. Once you get it down. <laughs> so that's everything that you'll receive. So I really like to work off of this sheet. Um, I mostly made these ones for those that may not be as experienced in m mixing colors to get what color you want. So if you have a really hard time with mixing colors, uh, this sheet I hope will help you out a little bit on realizing what colors actually go into making that color. So, and I'll kind of discuss that a little bit more throughout the video. And if you guys really want, I can make a whole nother video that goes into super depth onto how to just look at a color and kind of know what's in there. And it really just comes with practice and time. I mean, you do this enough and it gets pretty easy pretty quick. So, let's go on to the tools that I use. So... I actually like to tape down this plastic because otherwise it shifts a lot really easily 
and that can really throw off your stencils. So you really don't want your plastic to shift because that's when you get the frosting pushes under the stencil or the stencil will shift making it so that um, you don't get a crisp clear line. And my background is just parchment paper. I just do that as an extra layer, you know. Because you're obviously frosting on your plastic, but I kind of like to have the parchment paper as well. So once you have that taped down, I'm going to show you what tools I use. So I have this scraper, it's just like the straight edge that you'd use to, you know, straighten the edge of your cake, I guess. Um, the rubber spatula, a silicone spatula. I like the smaller ones because they have like, you know, the larger ones that are probably twice this size. And I'm not a fan of those. They're just too big and you don't have as much control. But with this, it's just the right size where you can get in there and really get the fine details without lifting up other pieces of the stencil, which we will go over because there is a part in here that you will experience some really fine stencil details. So we can discuss that a little bit more later. But I just use this glass bowl to mix all of my frosting in. Um, I also use saran wrap to store my colors. So I'll just tear off a chunk, put my color in there, kind of fold it up and set it off to the side because like we talked about, we do use the same color throughout pretty much the whole process. So there's that and then obviously I have my stencils. Um, let me just grab those real quick. I can kind of show you how I lay them out to make it easier. So like we talked about, when you look at this sheet, you see that we have um, one, two, three, four, four different layers that we're going to be working on, right? So I'll stack them up. So these are my H1 through H5. I'll stack those together and I have my P1 and P2 for the pit and then I'll have my W1 through W8 as its own stack and then my L1 through L4 as its own stack. So I'll just have these all stacked just above where I'm frosting. That way they're in order. I can just grab them as I go look at my sheet, know what I'm doing next, know the color that needs to be done, and I don't have to be digging through a ton of stencils trying to figure out what's going on. So that's how I lay those out. And then obviously I have my frosting. So my frosting recipe that we talked about at the beginning, this one right here, this one makes quite a bit. It uses a whole two pound bag of powdered sugar. So this is a fairly large container and it usually fills up you know like about half of it that's one full batch so you can get quite a few toppers out of this and I just put it in the airtight container that way it all stays fresh I guess <laughs> it doesn't harden and I'm sure there are probably a lot of you that understand how quickly the royal icing can harden if you don't store it correctly and if you're going to be storing it for a long term, that's when you throw a piece of saran wrap inside that container and then pop the lid back on. You can throw it in your fridge, in your freezer, and then just bring it back up to room temperature when you want to use it later. And it stores totally fine that way. So, um, oh, one more thing that's extremely important. So this frosting is not the consistency that we're going to frost with. It is way too thick but I like it on the thicker end side of things because then I can just water it down. So I just have this dropper and literally when we're, when we're messing with this, you only need to add like, you know, two or three drops to your color to make it just right for frosting with a stencil. So this is the same container. You can't really turn it too far sideways because it has water in it, <laughs> but this is the same little container that I use to actually make the frosting because you only need 
tablespoons and ounces of water and meringue powder. And so this is the same exact container that I use for that, just so you guys know. So I'll make a list of all these tools. Um, I do keep my little cup of water on a separate table from where I'm frosting because if I don't and I bump it, tip it over, whatever, all of my work is gone. <laughs> so just a little tip there to put off to the side. Um, and then you obviously will have, I just have a bowl of, a little bowl of uh, food coloring that I color with. So I think that covers all the tools and everything that you'll be receiving in your pack. You'll get this pack of papers, obviously, all these little instruction manual stuff, your plastic, your stencils, and I think that's it. That comes in your pack. So I hope that this can kind of get you guys started for now. Um, if you want to jump over and watch the actual frosting video, uh, I should have a link to that. Still figuring out all this YouTube stuff, so <laughs> bear with me. But yeah, that should be enough to get you guys started. And then I'll be uploading stencils as I can and keep making tutorials for my different packs and we'll get things rolling. Thanks for watching.